Hey, what's going on, friends? My podcast every day is broken up into two parts on the free platform. The first part, Act 1, is right now. When it's all done, go right on over to Act 2 to get the second half of the podcast. Thank you so much for checking out my show. Hello. Hello. Not every day. It's just, I I think my mind's going. Oh, pop, pop. Getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, Thank you so much for being here. Matt writes, nobody does radio better than EZ. Just ask him. I see you know me. Welcome into the show. We do it from the Impact Power Sports studio. Impact Power Sports, that's a fun place. You can go in there and just get lost. You wander into their showroom in Rockford, Michigan, along 14 Mile Road, and you're like, oh, God, this looks fun. For God's sakes. That is... uh, That could be a great thing. Wander in there, get a side-by-side, an ATV, three-wheeler, four-wheeler, two, I don't know, two-wheeler, motorcycle, e-bike, Yamaha golf cart, all things you can get, even a snowmobile or two. Uh, Go and shop. ImpactPowerSportsMI.com. Paul is here. He writes, missing your dad, EZ. Hope he's doing uh, all right. And he is. I just talked to him yesterday uh, when they broke the news to me that they cannot attend the last hurrah for the easy, easy show podcast family. Uh, We all get together up North on this big weekend and we kind of just sit around and stare at each other and eat. I think there's potential that Diana and my stepsister, uh, sitter, stepsister, Elizabeth might go out and do the town which usually involves them getting schnockered and then Charity Scam Mike and I have to go pick them up from somewhere. But sometimes, especially my stepsister, needs to blow off some steam. Poor thing's been raising a child with a disability for a long, long time, and she doesn't do it alone, of course, but uh, Chris in Buffalo says, get the Newports ready, easy. That's so funny. My God. We told a great... I told a great story... um, yesterday on the Patreon bonus podcast of when charity scam Mike went into a store to get a pack of Newports in Detroit. All of the party stores in Detroit are owned by Chaldeans. I'm not going to tell the story. Now you got to go to the Patreon Ben and Eric Patreon podcast from yesterday to hear the story. But yeah, him going to the store to buy Newports with the Iraqi guy who was new to the store family had owned it forever turned into a bit of an odd culture shift and struggle that story on the ben and eric patreon podcast from yesterday where it was a lot of fun we had a great and we had a lot of great conversations uh ben and i a lot of laughs we only did it for like one hour though because we were we had audience members dropping like flies and um for whatever reason who knows it might have been because they thought it sucked or because the Tigers were going on, or the Northern Lights were happening. I know everybody's like was all distracted, and I finally said, ah, you know what, let's just wrap it up after one hour instead of an hour and a half. But it was a good time. Love doing the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, and that was right after we finished up another edition of Who Are These Free Beers? Award winning. Not really. It was uh, show number 29. And we covered a lot of ground. I think between us, we had like 40 clips. We didn't use quite all of them, but it was sweet. Uh, You can check out both of those shows from a Big Fraud Thursday on my Patreon uh, for seven days free. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I'm surprised not everybody does that. Offers a seven days free. I think... Uh, I think I convinced Dr. Steve to do that. I was just talking with Dr. Steve. Some of you may not know who Dr. Steve is, but he has a show on Sirius XM. He got famous from (laughs) doing a show on the Opie and Anthony show. And he's a 
regular doctor. He's a run-of-the-mill doctor. And um, I became pals with him over the years from doing the Who Are These Podcast shit. And last year in Detroit for the Magic Bag live show with Who Are These Podcasts, I'm on stage with Carl and uh, Vinny Paulino and Dr. Steve. So we're reviewing our, the, our clips that we've pulled similar to what we do for who are these free beers or who are these Zanes or whatnot. And he was a bit off. Steve was a bit off. Dr. Steve, he kept like messing up his lines. Cause he would write various jokes. He's pretty funny. Actually. I write to him. Hey, are you going to be in Detroit? Not this time. I won a drawing entry at the Hard Rock Casino on that day, and I have a good chance of winning, whatever that means. And he writes, also, I had a bad experience there last time, and I still have a bad taste in my mouth about Detroit. So I wrote, you had a bad experience? What the heck happened? Oh, shit, he writes. Two of my friends disappeared right before the show, and I actually thought they were dead. So when he was on the stage with me, he thought they were dead. <laughs> Turns out they just left right before my segment on stage to go fuck. <laughs> but neither of them bothered to answer any of my texts or phone calls. So I was totally freaked out. I didn't even stay for the after party. Neither of them apologized or even acknowledged that their behavior was problematic. I was so distracted, I had a miserable time and bombed on stage. So fuck them both. And I'm like, so that that's what's keeping you from coming? You dummy. Rebecca is here. Uh, she says, EZ, did you see what Trump said about Detroit? I did. And I can't wait to get to it. Trump is in the news again. <laughs> I'll say this about him. I mean, he may not get it right all the time, but he is not afraid to just jump right in the shit. <laughs> That's fantastic. God damn, is it great? I cannot wait to get into this story with you. Trump is a riot. God, is that fucker funny? I find him so amusing. I don't want him to win the election, but I mean, there's a silver lining if Trump is is in the presidency. He's fucking hilarious. Uh, nice mom mug, easy. Yeah, it says Grand Valley State mom. Yeah, I just grabbed a mug. You're not a mom, easy. Now you're 20% gay. Jeremy says it sure seems like Trump doesn't like a lot of things in America. I would say he hates about half the things in America. Right about exactly 50%. No surprise there. All right. Uh, we go early on a Friday edition of the show uh, because the Northern Focus show takes over on Q100. And um, so I, I get out of school a little early on a Friday edition, so I'm able to get after this a little quicker than I normally do. Uh, I, I, have a, I had a conversation with an audience member on Q100, and um, <laughs> he... He, his name is uh, Todd, and he calls me up and says, so this is why I love Q100. I go, oh, yeah, what's up? And he describes to me that he just happened to be tuning into the competition in northern Michigan. It's a radio station called WKLT. And this is a typical rock radio radio station. And as you know... Uh, most radio stations, they play from a playlist of about 400 songs. They rotate them in and out, but generally it's 400 or so, maybe a little less. How do they get to picking those songs? They have a focus group. They bring in 150 people at a hotel. They get some pizzas and they play eight seconds of a song. And then each person has to fill out on their little card, know it, 
don't know it, know it, but don't like it, know it and like it, don't like it. It's a test. This is a music test. It's a research project. And they gather up all that data. And there's usually a guy there who's typing at a computer and entering the data. And then with that data, they curate a playlist. And then they take that information and they play those songs. And they, like if the song plays at 8 a.m. on Monday, it'll play at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. And then 4 p.m. on Wednesday and 4 a.m. on Thursday. And then they flip it all upside down the next week. And that's what they do. And they don't play requests. Where am I going with this? Well, Todd, who called, was listening to this radio station. He goes, this is why I love your radio station, Easy. I go, what is it? He says, I was listening to KLT. And somebody calls up the radio station. And they, they put the person on the air. And the person says, I just want my, my brother just died. Oh, my God. He said, he, he loved your radio station. He's, he's just so in love with you. And. He just lost his life. Oh, my God. And, and the jock's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, how can we help you? What can we do for you? Oh, my God. His favorite his favorite artist that you played was George Thorogood. He, he loved George Thorogood. And uh, could you play this song for him? It was his favorite song of all time. And he, he loves you. And he's, he's may he rest in peace. And yada, yada, yada. She goes, oh, okay. And she actually says on the radio. Well, I played that song yesterday, so I'm going to play this one instead. <laughs> what? Huh? Like, as if if she played it, it again, like something bad would happen. Oh, my God. What a, what a travesty. So I told that story on the air, which probably pissed them off, which is good. Fuck those guys. Uh, JC heard me talk about that. He wrote, um, I was listening to KLT when that happened, when Terry Ray fielded the call. And she, she actually told the story. So the sentimental song she played instead was Bad to the Bone. And, and she's the fucking program director. So she can make that call. What the fuck are you doing? JC writes, I've had the privilege to play four or five death dedications and tell, talk about the deceased. And I couldn't, uh, I cannot fathom altering it. Then JC went and posted something on his Facebook page about who, how many of you have ever been given a rock and roll gift for your birthday? Like taken to a concert or been per somebody because it was somebody's fucking birthday or something like that. I don't know. And I indicated, I go, ah, yeah, that's never happened to me, but, uh, okay. And he writes, yeah, I'm not surprised that no one ever gave you a present. I remember seeing Crosby, Stills, and Nash on my 24th birthday. <laughs> and the gal who took me, he writes, fucked me so hard I thought I broke my dick. Jesus. I did not tell that story on the air. But talk about it here, so that's cool. Uh, speaking of love, Kenny is here. We missed him yesterday on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And for who are these Zanes? So you'll have to go back and check that out. Uh, good to see you, young man. Hope you're doing okay. Hope the uh, dieting is going. Don't forget, we've got a weigh-in in three days. This was kind of a weirdo week as Kenny went up a little bit and Jeremy is plateauing. He only lost like a couple pounds. So hopefully you uh, you guys have had a good week here. Kenny.
Kenny says the dieting is not going well this week. Well, you better turn that around. You got three days. You can still salvage this. You got all of today, all of Saturday, all of Sunday. You can really turn it around. Okay. I don't want to turn that frown upside down, whatever it is that's bugging you. And, um, let that shit go today. We're eating well today. We are, we're going to finish our intermittent fast. If you haven't started, if you've already broken your fast, well, all right, you got to be smart on this. Okay. Because if Jeremy starts slaughtering you, we're going to give up our, our little, um, you know, compiling of our points and our record here, because it's going to be, it's going to be a bummer. We don't want that. Come on now. You can't start to end this so soon after we began it. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go, bro. Jeremy says, I'm putting in some work this weekend, but I'm sticking strong to the diet. Okay. That's good, big fella. Uh, Chris from Buffalo on Kenny not being available yesterday. Says, yeah, what the fuck, Kenny? No Kenny the love bug stories this week. We we did we were so lean on people yesterday. It's truly, it's obviously the end of the podcast. That's what this means. Joe Martinez is here stirring up shit. Uh, talking about Michigan State. He says, little sister going to win this week, this weekend. I don't know if that's a question or a statement because there's no punctuation at the end of it. So I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll tell you if they're going to win. Let me see. They host Iowa. Boy, I, I don't I don't know about that. I wonder who's favored in that one. I would say that Iowa probably, it'll be even, maybe, I don't know. Uh, they lost last game, and Michigan State has lost three in a row. They've been horrible. Uh, the 12th is the next game and Michigan or is tomorrow. Michigan does not play. And they are in Illinois next weekend. Who well, I guess Illinois is improved. Like right now, Illinois is ranked 23rd in the nation. Michigan dropped to 24 after falling at Washington. And then on the 26th, you've got Michigan State at Michigan. Okay, now that's that's huge. The only way Michigan State can turn this around, well, they just got to win. But if they can manage to beat Michigan, which, come on now, that is not going to happen. That would be quite an upset. Uh, Nick writes, I look forward to the Thursday shows each week. I just can't listen live because I have my daughters. So, um, does that mean that there is not a Mrs. Nick right now in your life? Cause I thought that there was a Mrs. Nick. Not that I'm looking to date you, but I, I, I just didn't picture you as the type to not have a Mrs. Nick. He says he's a single dad with a Russian girlfriend. Does she speak with a sweet accent? Does she speak English with a sweet European slash Russian Asian accent? I guess Russia is part of Asia too and part of Europe, isn't it? I don't know. So does she have that outstanding type of uh, uh, English with a uh, an accent? And he says, yes, a beautiful accent. But, you know, that right there is a reason enough to just marry someone. When someone has that sweet accent, especially Russians, it's just, I find it to be outstanding. Well, that's cool. Sorry that you're a single dad. I mean, whatever the fuck happened. You don't strike me as the type, though. That is hard to get along with. 
You know, I, I did not picture you to be someone who um, had a relate, you know, where it blew up in your face for whatever reason. Kenny says, can you order those from a website or something asking for a friend? How does one go about, I mean, she obviously, you said she's been here a couple of years. So she came here, she got herself established, and then you met this person. Is that how it all came to pass? And was it, did you meet this person on like a dating app? And then when you finally met face to face, you're like, oh my God, she sounds unbelievable with that amazing accent on her English. I'm curious about how this arrangement started. Yes, she moved here for work and we met on Tinder. You know that whenever you introduce her to anyone, they're going to assume that you ordered her online, just like Kenny said. That's that's what that's what people are going to assume. I mean, that's what I assumed. I assumed when you said you have a Russian girlfriend that you're just like some kind of loser who can't like get a girl, and you had to like get one like who was trafficked or something like that. But I know that's not true, but that's what people are going to think. I want you to know that. So you might want to get her a t-shirt when she's, you know, when you're walking around and it says, I was not trafficked. I actually love this guy. Nick says I work for the government and I've had to do quite a lot of paperwork and meet with investigators because of my security clearance. Wow. That took a turn. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Yankee suck 138, who I believe is named Kevin is in Northern Ontario says when I DJed at a strip club, I knew a lot of Russian women who moved here for work too. How are things in Northern Ontario? They must be cold. I'm guessing it's, you know, you were probably uh, front and center for the Northern lights last night there kevin i mean because we got them here in michigan uh, everybody has been talking about the northern lights it's been a big topic in the past 24 hours around here uh radio voice linda sent me some pics i i went as far as just looking out the window and i didn't see shit Always tracking, always alert. Here's our friend Storm from, uh, Wood covering the Northern Maybe Lights. Saw, but we got to show you a few pictures from the incredible Northern Lights show we got just after 10 o'clock tonight. Want to begin with Scott Winters? That name may sound familiar here in Cedar Springs. Beautiful. Uh, I know Scott. Scott was uh, he's a, a longtime radio guy. I think he's kind of like a uh, uh, a MAGA guy now. I think he does MAGA for a living. Remember Scott? Scott, and this was the case across West wow. Michigan. Let's take you up to the UP. It's from my friend Ken and Curtis. Goodness gracious, what a shot. And there are pictures like this all over the state of Michigan. Just a stunning display at Northern Lights tonight. This from Jamie in Cedar Springs. And look at the colors. A lot of green, a lot of pink in there. At one point, we could see it from our downtown cameras. It was strong for about 15 minutes. And there may be another flare-up or two tonight. So check outside before you head to bed if you want to catch a glimpse. Can you imagine if, I mean, right now, if we saw that, most people would know that um, those are the northern lights. Most people would know that. Imagine there's a few who... Uh, maybe younger people who have never heard of such a thing and they look up and see that. Can you imagine how their brain would melt if they'd never heard of the Northern Lights? Didn't even know that, that, that something like that existed? That would fry your brain. If you're like walking the dog. and Because uh, I remember when I first saw him, I was driving on M20 from Mount Pleasant to Midland to do radio at Z93, Tune Man. Um, and I look out the car window and I was like, what the fuck? What is that? And then, um, I had, I had like heard of them, but I, I, I couldn't have told you that those were the Northern lights. So for a period of time, I was that guy. I was like, 
the fuck is going on here? And uh, it just fried my brain. Joe Martinez says, I don't think little sister plays this weekend. You're right. Not bad. Thank you. Next weekend. Um, Joe says, go blue. We are Michigan. We bow to no one. Well, no, you do. I mean, you took it right in the tailpipe last week. So that was absolutely bowing. You you bowed to them. You've bowed to two teams. You took it right up the dirt chute twice. Rebecca is not responding well to to you. Rebecca doesn't like that at all. She says, that's getting really old. She's had it with you. Kenny says the same thing. He says, that's not getting old at all. So these people have had it with you, Joe Martinez. They, they're fed up with your shenanigans. No, I love it. I, I think it's really great. <laughs> Piano finger banger with comment of the day writes, I might actually vote for Trump so that Joe gets deported. Okay. Um, first of all, Joe was born in America. He's not even born in Mexico. He has Mexican heritage, but he was born in the U.S. So that's nonsense. Chris says, you might have to step in and sponsor more money to EZ for these shenanigans. No, no. You know, I can't. It's okay. I don't mind Joe's shenanigans. Ryan says, if you're born in the U.S., it won't stop Trump's people. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Joe has the strength of like 10 men. So I don't think he can. There's no way anything like that would ever happen. He's just an absolute legend. But Michigan, I mean, they kind of stink this year. Come on now. They're not as bad as Michigan State, but they kind of stink. Bob, uh, also annoyed with Joe Martinez. That's three people. How could any of you be annoyed with Joe Martinez? He's an absolute legend. He has kept this, he has single-handedly kept this podcast afloat for um, like six years. That's a long time. So Joe, um, let me just tell you this. If you're a sponsor to this show, you have a... um, a higher threshold. Like you got to really fuck up for me to let you have it. And so he's not even close. Okay. I'll I'll be the first one to tell you that if people give me money, you are going to get so much more latitude. All right. Joe could come on here and probably say the N word and I wouldn't do anything. Um, Bob says, I think the typos and lack of punctuation is what's annoying. I think I might have read that one. I don't know. Becky says, I don't think it matters to Trump that Joe was born in the U.S. Oh, come on. It's ridiculous. Joe writes, dump is a little bitch anyways. And I don't know what that means. Uh, Linda says, how is scum even in the top 25? Well, Michigan was 10th, and they lost a tough road game in the Big Ten. That's how. (laughs) Kenny writes, Joe is great when it comes to sponsorship, the work he does, and the giving back that he does. Good, good dude. But holy shit, the chat comments. I see why Stevie has him blocked. (laughs) Then Kenny writes, fuck off already about the effing college football team every single fucking day. Joe, are you going to take that shit? And then Kenny says, I love you, Joe. 
Hey, everybody. It's your pal, EZ, to talk about one of my amazing partners, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's done it right, you know. If you're like a sucker who's uh, trapped paying tons of money to big wireless, it's time to end that cycle. You see, with big wireless, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. I've seen this happen so many times, especially with Pooh Bear, when she like uh, uh, breaks her phone and gets a new one. Oh yeah, it's only going to cost me this much. And get home and it's a complete disaster. I need like uh, you know a personal loan to pay the bill. With Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about the gutches ever again. <laughs> when Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Okay, Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans. I do this, and you should too. My bill went from astronomical to 15 bucks a month for my phone. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Uh, the game is up for Big Wireless. We are on to you. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash Zane. That's mintmobile.com slash Zane. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Zane. $45 upfront payment required. That's equivalent to 15 bucks a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speeds slower, over 40 gig on unlimited plan, but you'll be fine. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Joe says these people would, lo- would miss me anyways. Yeah, they would. I don't want to be in a world. I don't want to be in a world where Joe Martinez is not around. Okay. Uh, piano finger banger goes with, I'm go blue all the way, but Joe makes me question my fandom. Matt says, stop. <laughs> hey, stop talking about Michigan. I want to bitch about Twitch ads, man. <laughs> oh, that's so true. That's a great point. For as much as Joe cheers on Michigan, that's the same amount that you bitch about Twitch ads. So there's that. All right. Um, dump is what Joe refers to as Trump. It's irrelevant to me what they say because they root for uh, a loser like Trump. Yeah. I I don't know. Whatever. I'm glad you bring that up because Trump was in Michigan in Detroit and he's speaking to the uh, economic club. So you got a bunch of people that are like interested in the revitalization of Detroit and, and um, to be fair, um, that particular area, well, some areas of Detroit have been experiencing a renaissance. You're getting a lot of young people that are moving back into Detroit. You have riverfront riverfront property that is uh, people are buying up and a lot of these neighborhoods are being revitalized and new industries are uh, popping up all over the place. And it's actually a pretty uh, solid place to, um, to set up shop both um, on the home front and the business front. Not to mention the sports teams. Most of the sports teams are doing well. Brings a lot of uh, buzz to the city, if you will. And um, it's definitely a lot better now than in years past. You remember you had the uh, NFL draft there. There was a million people roaming the streets. And of course, in any large city, you're going to have Uh, problems and ups and downs, but, um, you know, whatever Midwest town manufacturing is the key union, uh, community, whatever. If you come into Detroit 
and you are speaking to the economic club, there's a way to have your cake and eat it too. But Trump is so matter of fact and hysterical in my opinion. He comes marching into Detroit and says, the rest of the country is going to be screwed up just like Detroit if you don't vote for me. And they're like, wait, what? (laughs) All right. He slammed the city saying our whole country will end up being like Detroit if Harris is elected. He said, quote, the whole country will be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. You're going to have a mess on your hands. We're not going to let her do that to this country. We're not going to let it happen. He talked a lot about the automotive industry. He said, yeah, the automotive industry has always been dear to my heart. Whatever. He said that uh, Harris does not care about this issue. He said, I don't think anybody we're talking about today is high on her list. Um, went on to talk about wanting to save the U.S. auto industry many years ago. He then said, they're stealing your auto industry. Years ago, they're stealing your auto industry. You got to stop it. Well, they didn't exactly listen. Among those quick to respond, wait a minute, and then he also said, but we have to make that industry bigger, better, stronger, and more dynamic than ever before. And I've been reading about Detroit for so many years that it's coming around, it's coming around, and never really got there. Okay, so just when you start to think that he's going to fix the comment, he says it never really got there. The mayor of Detroit is a guy named Mike Duggan. He said, well, Detroit just hosted the largest NFL draft in history. The Tigers are in the playoffs. The Lions are headed to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't know if you want to hang your head on the sports team. So, I mean, you can you can mention that as like part of it, but I think the things that are important are jobs and people living there. So whatever. But he starts with that. And then he says, crime is down and our population is growing. Lots of cities should be like Detroit. And we did it all without Trump's help. The multi-talented Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer, responded. She said, Detroit is the epitome of grit defined by winners willing to get their hands dirty to build up their city and create their communities. Something Donald Trump could never understand. So keep Detroit out of your mouth and you better believe Detroiters won't forget this in November. Well, I mean, that sounds good. I like that type of talk. It doesn't change anything. Okay, at the end of the day, Trump saying Detroit sucks doesn't matter. Everyone who's going to vote for Trump is going to vote for Trump. There is not one person who heard that who is a Trump supporter that went, ha, that's it, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. And the other way too, it it just doesn't, no one cares. The only thing this story is, excuse me, The only good thing about this story is that it's something to talk about. I often love when people see something like this and they're like, oh, how could he? How could he say such a thing? This is so terrible. No, it's not. This is the guy who the day before the last Alara in 20, whatever year it was, when he won the last time, he was, yeah, you're going to grab him by the pussy. If you can get away with grab them by the pussy, uh, you can get away with anything. Who gives a shit that he said Detroit's a shithole? There's parts of it that are a real shithole. Maybe he passed the shithole spots on the way to this. My point is, let's fucking lighten up. Who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter.
Tofus, uh, Jeremy says to Joe Martinez, keep that energy when Michigan doesn't make a bowl game. Tofus says, what did Trump do now? There you go. Ryan says the Detroit slam did absolutely nothing to weirdo Trumpers that think the hurricanes were crafted by Democrats to kill MAGA loyalists. Exactly. Those people that support Trump after Trump says shit about Detroit, even if they are in Detroit and they love Detroit, they don't give a shit. Not going to change anything. Darko echoes what I said and says, to be fair, most of Detroit is a shithole. Yeah. Come on. now. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, Trump said far worse. Piano finger banger says exactly, Ryan. Those MAGA people are too far gone. Uh, Kenny says, I have to admit, I've only driven through the Detroit area once, and I was seriously like, oh, my God, it's worse than I thought. Yeah, you have to know where to go to get to the areas that don't look like a war zone. It's still very bad. There are entire city blocks that are just vacant homes in various states of disrepair. So bad that in some of these cases, the city has just torn down entire streets of homes and put in green space. So you have, that's what Ryan says. It's impressive how much of it is just green space. Now we're kind of like on the same page in our thoughts here. And so they like make parks in hope that one day they can turn it around and put homes up there. But yeah, they've had to read. And the reason why it's not, they're not all ripped down is because there's so many homes that are abandoned. Kevin in Northern Ontario says, is there a city in North America that isn't mostly a shithole anymore? Well, yeah, come on now. Of course. Donko says Trump. So Trump was right again. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Well, maybe, maybe to some degree, I think it's just the honesty that moves the meter. It's interesting when somebody steps out on a ledge and says something like that. Yes, it can be interpreted as a horrible thing to say. And, but really that should surprise no one. That is not a big deal. There's whole towns in upstate New York that are shitholes because the one manufacturing job that kept the town alive left a long time ago. There are shitholes almost everywhere. I often wonder about, you know, how much of an influence um, things like that are. Like in up in Grayling, Fear Bunker North, this is a desperately poor town. And um, they're starting to get a foothold for their, their uh, uh, banking on the natural resources. The woods, hunting areas, um, rivers and streams, and snowmobile trails. So years ago in Michigan, they outlawed motorcycles, ATVs, and snowmobiles on those trails. And that was such a mistake. And they were like, well, we got to protect. We don't want people ripping up the roads or whatever the fuck. I don't know why the, why they did it in the first place, but you've got, um, you know, every month of the year, every week of the year, people coming up to do this. So they'd come up and they would uh, spend their money and rip up the trails. And it was a great time. Well, then they outlawed it. Well, everything went in the dumper because that was, they figured out that that was the only thing that people were spending money, how money was made in the area was through tourism. So after all the uh, uh, fun little places went under, they finally brought it back and said, you can now take your snowmobiles everywhere and your motorcycles and your side-by-sides. So they've been able to resurrect the tourist industry up north. And that's like one of the only industries that's prominent up in Grayling. There are a few more that have opened up, but it's remarkable. 
I mean, if you turn it upside down like that, of course it's going to fuck up. I mean, it was unbelievable. But they're fixing it now. Uh, Nick in the arena says, yeah, if you go into the suburbs of Detroit, he wrote North Detroit, but he means like uh, the suburbs. Troy, Birmingham, Sterling Heights, those areas are nicer than West Michigan. They're, they're beautiful, but it's all just concrete and strip malls. New Era Hat Company left Buffalo. Uh, the town they started in a few years ago. Now we have nothing for Buffalo area. There is no metro sprawl like the metro Detroit area. It goes forever. So back when I was a kid, Detroit, the suburbs um, where I lived in the city of Warren, that was north of Detroit by a handful of miles. Since then, it's continued to go north. Now it's up to where my dad lives by like 23, 24 mile and well beyond that. Off-roading tourism is what is helping turn West Virginia around. And we have people like Alyssa Slotkin that want to ban the gas engine. You know, I I heard a uh, she is running for the Senate in the great state of Michigan against a guy named Mike Rogers. Now, she w- responded in an ad and said, I have no desire to take away your options on having a gas powered vehicle. That's what she said in her marketing. So I don't know how true that is. I'm going to have to look that up because I don't want to vote for somebody who wants to ban the gas motor. I don't think that's a, I don't think that that's true, Nick. I think you might be being retarded and believing like something that isn't a reality. By the way, you need to smoke menthol cigarettes. You ding dong. The fuck are you doing? Like we talked about this on the Patreon or on the Ben and Eric show. Why would you not want to smoke a cigarette that has minty menthol goodness to it? Why would you want to just taste shit? All right. I am all over the map on this podcast today and I love it. I love these types of podcasts. A Friday is like uh, senioritis. That's how I always feel. Um, I was talking with Brian Vander Ark from the Verve Pipe. And he had a fun comment about his son because he and his son are gigantic Detroit Lions fans. Now, Brian's old. He's even older than I am. And he says, yeah, I've been a Lions fan for a long, long time, as you can imagine, easy. I go, yep. Most people in Michigan are. Just because I'm, so I'm very, very excited about them. And he says, but I was uh, sitting with my son and we were reminiscing on the loss in the NFC championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. And the kid is eight. And his son said, Dad, you know how many years. I've been watching the Detroit Lions and how they've lost every year. And he's eight. And Brian's like, son, you have no idea what this is like. Your debt, how old's your debt? 60. Yeah, I've been, I've been waiting for as long as I've been able to watch TV. So probably in the mid-1970s. My God. Go Lions. This week they're in Dallas. Back to the scene of the crime for a 420 kickoff. Also, our beloved Michigan sports. I don't I don't really like to dwell on when the teams that I'm following at the time lose because this just puts everybody in a bad mood. So the Tigers play tomorrow. It's game five. Yesterday they lost, whatever, at home. Fans go home unhappy. So now they got to go to Cleveland. But the thing of it is, Um, you would think that Cleveland would be the favorite, but they're not. They're the underdog in this game because the Tigers have the best pitcher in the whole, in all of baseball. And his name is Tarek Skubal. And he's on fucking fire. 
And so I don't think he's given up a run in the playoffs yet. So that guy is a stud, and he is going to be pitching tomorrow night just after 8 p.m. So go Tigers. If they can beat Cleveland in that game, they go to the American League Championship Series. So that would be so exciting. Very, very cool. Um, Joe talks about another meltdown about the Lions. So he's still not sold. Now, I know this about Joe Martinez. He is a Lions fan. But he's still in that I don't, I'm not going to believe it mode, which, you know, you get that. You get that. Now, if Joe Martinez were any other member of the audience who didn't give me literally um, thousands of dollars, I would tell him to fuck off and ban him. But I can't, I would never dream of doing that. Okay. He's also extremely negative about the Tigers. And um, he says if they lose, if they beat Cleveland, they would lose to the Yankees. Okay. You know, I don't know. I don't know how you, um, is there, other than Michigan football, is there anything you like? I don't think there is. I think outside of your family and the Griffins um, and Michigan football, I think I think you hate every and Trump. Well, you don't like Trump. You you hate Trump and then those other things you like. That that's that's uh not that big of a palette there. We could do Joe Martinez I hate everything sports updates. Thank you for being part of this podcast. It's on Facebook and YouTube right now, but not for long. Because I'm about to send you on your way. The rest of the show is available on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Or download the Twitch app. And just type Eric Zane uh, Zane Live in the search function. And there you go. Give yourself a username. Enjoy the show with us in the chat. And have a good time. Patreon is available for free for seven days. You do need to put in a payment form. Just cancel it after that and enjoy the seven days. When that's up, you won't be charged. But if you want to sign up again, your credit card is on file. Just enable it, and then you can enjoy more content on my Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Eric Zane. You can reach out to me on email, eric at ericzaneshow.com on the Shoreliners striping inbox. I appreciate all the uh, comments, concerns. If you... Uh, have a story that you like or or that you're reading and you find interesting, by all means, send it along. And uh, it might just be just the thing that we talk about in this show. Okay. Thank you to all of those who are on Facebook and YouTube. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Speaking of them, a little bit more in-depth on what they do. So you take your car in there. Hey, uh, it's making this noise. Rat-a-tat-tat. Can you check it? I also need an oil change. Okay. They go over the car. Um, They tell you all of the things that are in need. And it's like um, green light, yellow light, red light. Yellow light on your transmission fluid. Yellow light on your tires. Red light on your... um, And... antifreeze coolant system you gotta you gotta replace this approve or deny approve approve deny deny approve okay great all right um they they fix your car and then you go pick it up you can use a um loaner car of theirs they have loaner cars for you to use so that you can uh, get around while your vehicle is being repaired everything you need at irvine's auto repair grand rapids hybrid and ev Thank you so much to them. They are fantastic. ervines.com. That's ervines.com for more information. I've been talking about our pal Joe Martinez. Um, At the end of the day, there is no one better at repairing your furnace or AC. Uh, A and E heating and cooling for a long time. We go back 
sponsor of the Eric Zane Show podcast. I can think, count on one hand, who has been around longer. Rick from TC is the longest running sponsor because he goes back to um, post Free Bear and Hot Wings when I was doing a YouTube show in my living room. So we got to go back to February of 2016 for Rick. But right up there is Joe Martinez. I remember where I was when he was said he was interested in marketing on the podcast. I believe it was at an auction and I was on the ice at Van Andel Arena. And he, I had seen him in the past, but had, didn't really know him that well. And uh, he mentioned about interest in it. And then I sent him off a package, a digital package of what the podcast can do. And the rest is history. Joe Martinez's logo, A&E Heating and Cooling, is going to be at ice level this year. Are you a dasher board or are you on the ice? The dasher boards are those ones that go around the rink. Um, he's become a marketing partner with the Grand Rapids Griffins. So you'll be able to see that A&E Heating and Cooling on the ice um, at the Griffins game. So that is cool. And I'll see you tonight, young man. 616-516-8579. That's how you get a hold of Joe Martinez to uh, get the best heating and cooling care for your setup. And don't forget, uh, $145, uh, you can save that. You can get paid, actually. Joe Martinez has the bill covered from DTE for your furnace tune-up and your diagnostic test. Uh, test. Just call 616-516-8579. Joe says, no, you were on the radio at WBBL. Oh, fuck, I'm messing this up. I thought it was during the podcast. Well, anyway, thank you. I appreciate you, even though you're a pain in the ass. Uh, Rick over at TC Paintball. Let me blow in a call to him. See what he's doing. I know his, Rick is really into his kid's football. Rick might be like a stage dad when it comes to football. Um, one of our favorites. At least mine. I hope he's yours too. Watch your ears. Hello, Eric Zane. Rick from TC Paintball. I'm podcasting. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Never better. How's the football team going? Uh, you know, it's a football season, so there's ups and downs. Um, we've got one more week left. We've got uh, one victory under our belt. Uh, but we've seen a lot of development with the kids. It's been a it's been a rewarding season. What is the age of the children? They're seventh graders. So my kid is uh, twelve, almost thirteen. What position does he play? Lane plays a uh, defensive end and tight end. Has he caught a touchdown this year or sacked the quarterback? Uh, he's he's a menace on defense. He's uh he's got a lot of uh, tackles for losses. Um, he's got one reception on the year. Doesn't have a touchdown reception, but uh, it's a very run-oriented offense. Uh -huh. So he doesn't. Uh, I mean, we don't throw the ball very much. Right. Do young people trash talk? Oh, my kid does. <laughs> my so you know my kid. He's taller than me. He's twelve, almost thirteen. Kids taller than me now. Yeah. If uh, if he didn't act like me, I would have a lot of questions for my wife. But he has my mouth. He acts like me. He's got an attitude. Um, and wow. he doesn't, doesn't always know where to draw the line. Um, there was a play, I think it was the first game of the season, where he's on the field, I'm on the sideline, and I can hear him saying, he's fucking holding me. Oh, oh, oh my God. Yeah. So I got, you know, and I'm not the head coach this year. I'm an assistant coach. So right. then the head coach that I've just met is looking at me going, what in the hell is wrong with your kid? And oh. I'm just shaking my head. Um, so that I remember in the, my times interacting with Lane, he doesn't 
he did strike me as a little bit buttoned up. I didn't know there's like an animal side to him or has he just kind of like grown into his skin? Well, he's, he's quiet when he's around people he's not fully comfortable with. He's got some shyness to him, which I am too. I'm a very socially awkward individual, and, and it's weird because I'm in sales, obviously, owning my business and doing what I do. So I've got to talk to a lot of people I'm not super comfortable with. Right. But if there's not a subject at hand that I feel like I am comfortable talking about, I just shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. And I can't fill the air with nonsense. Lane's kind of the same way, where if he's not super comfortable, he's not going to say much. But when he's got an opinion, he has a, an opinion. It's uh, it's the same way on the football field as it is on the paintball field. He, um, you know, traveling to these big tournaments, we do a lot of uh, uh, preparation and practice. And if things don't go the way he thinks they should go, you know, he uh, he's not shy about that at all. How does mom feel about this? Does she encourage the behavior? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a constant struggle. Um, you know, uh, he so a, a week ago I had a, a an event I had to go work out of town I had to go to Chicago so I missed football practice that day and Lane was at football practice that day and on the way to uh, school that morning I'm dropping him off right before I'm heading out of town and I noticed just the way that he's acting he's very um, active. Um, uh, maybe a little obnoxious maybe a little bit uh, uh, louder than normal and I look at him and I said. You didn't take your pill this morning, did you? Oh. And he's got a pill that kind of regulates his behavior a little bit, that kind of takes the edge off and it uh, quiets him down. He didn't take his pill. And I'm like, and I'm shaking my head going, son of a bitch, Lane. I'm like, Yo, listen, you can't have a bad day at school. You can't have a bad day at practice. All right, that is Act 1 of the podcast. Act 2 is available right after this one. Go check it out. What are you doing? Don't miss a second of it. Thank you so much.